Hello and welcome back everyone, Denzel Rodriguez here, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. If you are watching this video, this is a financial freedom series, so there's going to be multiple parts. This video is part two. If you did not watch part one, please stop watching this video and go back to part one so you have the full context of what we are engaging in in the financial freedom series. If you did watch part one, welcome to part two. We're going to dive right into it, not wasting any time. For those of you that are looking for part one, look in the comment section. I pinged the video link to the top of the comment section. Um, I may also display it in, in the bars. There's You can find it. You're not going to get lost. There's going to be in a playlist titled Financial Freedom Series. So let's dive right into it. Here's a recap on the numbers that we discussed in part one, the financial strategies. Now we're going to look at infinite banking because in this particular situation, that is what we are incorporating. Debt snowball occurred. That was the first strategy where we're just eliminating credit card debt. We're in the process of obtaining a HELOC. They're already doing the fire movement, so they don't need any assistance or help on that. They're getting educated on the infinite banking concept so we can uh, implement two whole life insurance policies, one on wife, one on husband. Just so you have a, a, a timeline, this uh, a couple became a client on May 18th. They joined the Velocity Banking Manifesto on the monthly plan. And then after not even a month, they upgraded and decided to join me on a lifetime journey, okay, where the first five to seven years is all about becoming debt free, debt leveraged, doing velocity banking, infinite banking, kingdom authority, building a business, multiplying their income by 10, going from 12K a month on the low end to as high as 120. Even if we fail miserably, they're not going to be upset. Let's say we get 50% of the way there. That's 60,000 a month in revenue and income. Even if they increase their lifestyle by double, going from eight grand to uh, 16,000, plenty of cash flow left over to do a lot of damage, building their retirement accounts, savings, uh, assets, you name it. After those, after that five to seven years is over, they're, they're with me for life, right? We're going to have a great relationship. We're going to be friends. We can fly out to see each other. We can do events together. We can engage in real estate deals together. You name it, right? That is my uh, uh, end game is to really expand the kingdom here on earth, right? Engage in fellowship and worship. Uh, build strong relationships with people uh, and just have a lot of fun while doing it, right? Uh, gotta have fun. So with that being said, let's look at the strategy in terms of how we came up with the numbers in part one. We sh I showed that uh, husband would be funding 25 grand a year, wife would be funding 20,000 a year. So what I do is I take the person's cash flow times 12, conservative, that's 47,634, 12 a year. On the aggressive side, that's 70,000 dollars 550 and 16 cents so anywhere between 47 and 70 grand is what we're cash flowing on a yearly basis i then take the total cash flow in a year i times that by two-thirds 66 percent and i get 31,438.51 on the low end and on the high end 46,563 and 10 cents okay this gives me a range as to how much money we're going to redirect right from savings and potentially investing and first storing it in cash value life insurance first then borrowing against that to make investments where we can earn money in two locations have asset protection tax-free growth tax-free uh, death benefit multiple benefits uh, protection of the cash value from lawsuits right uh, even in um, in the unfortunate event of a divorce, um, the cash value is protected from, like I said, lawsuits and people coming after your money uh, when they're stored in cash value life insurance. So there's that additional protection there. And on the other side, husband and wife, let's say they have kids, let's say husband pass away, wife pass away, one or both. Uh, when they do eventually pass away, tax-free death benefit paid out to their heirs or church nonprofit charities wh whichever they desire that's where that legacy planning gets uh, built into place in addition to all the other assets they're building so 20 and 25k is our max funding amount for two policies and when you look at the numbers it's really not impossible to do so that's really how i come up with the numbers i look at their cash flow times 12 and i take that to thirds i say okay 31 to 46 so they chose 45 that was their number also keep in mind they have forty-four thousand dollars from the first day of working with me. That number is going to increase, but they got forty-four grand cash on hand 
in in capital so we could pull from that plus cash flow plus debt tool to help max fund the policy and i'm gonna go through those different options but just so you get the timeline here by august or sooner their credit card debt would be done they might even get done much sooner than that, probably july right by september or sooner right could go a little bit longer but i'm estimating by september or sooner they'll have the two policies put in place that means they went through underwriting did the medical exam um they got the policies issued they look at the contract they agree they sign they fund september policies are in place of 2022 Okay. to max fund the policy because they can simply start the policy by just paying the base premiums on both along with the term cost and the PUA charge. That's very easy to do. That's not an issue here. In terms of max funding, different options I laid out for them, which was they could either pull from savings plus whatever cash flow they have on hand to max fund. That That's not hard to do when the number is 45K being the total. They could do savings portion of savings, cash flow, all of cash flow, plus HELOC, right? So their debt tool, they could pull from their debt tool to help them max fund the policy. If they want to, you know, feel uh, comfortable at night or it helps them sleep at night, having money in the bank. I, I know other people um, don't mind simply just moving a lot of their liquid cash out of the banks because of the information that they grow to learn over time. So it's to each his own, right? Other option is they can just use the HELOC alone to max fund the policy, then do velocity banking on the debt tool itself with the person's savings plus cash flow. Okay, that's a cool way to leverage OPM and then use your money to facilitate the debt that you just borrowed to have really no borrowing costs whatsoever. From there, let's say all goes well by 2022 right by the end of 2022 or sooner let's say all goes well max fund to the policy they're gonna have around 20,000 and 16,000 in starting cash value I take that number I times it by two-thirds or 66 percent granted you can adjust these numbers however you like this is just my max number when it comes to leveraging life insurance policies and leveraging debt tools it's just my safety mechanism it's become a rule it's become a principle and for hundreds if not thousands of clients and viewers it's worked very well so there's something to be said there in terms of the rule itself again you can go above it you can abuse it you can violate it you can go below it it's it's all up to you you, you cater this to your personal capacity to manage and leverage debt to your benefit right to create more income more cash flow more uh, financial freedom so i take the two starting cash value numbers times it by two-thirds you're gonna get thirteen thousand two hundred and ten thousand five sixty that would be the total amount of money that i if i was in their position knowing all that i know is how much i would personally borrow from my life insurance policies total number would be twenty three thousand 760 total capital take that number times it by four percent because with the current life insurance company their variable loan interest rate with guardian life insurance will most likely be around four percent so i just took the four percent number right times it boom 528 422 total 950 dollars 40 cents total borrowing costs from the policy itself from there i need to decide what am i gonna do with the money once it's borrowed out the goal is to offset this the 950 the policy itself over time not in one year but over time will offset but not initially so i like to take the initiative and offset my borrowing costs not just offset it but create more revenue more income in part one of the financial freedom series i mentioned that they have a bakery business so i did a little homework and I saw that on average, according to Google, the average bakery business, a small bakery business, will do about 325 to about 450,000 in revenue annually, gross. Okay, cool. So I took that number and I also looked at the profit margins. Okay, a uh, low profit margin for a bakery business would be 5%. Um, decent would be 10. Anything above 20 is considered good. Okay, so I took the 20% profit margin say so, okay from that number 20 percent looked at the different profit margins and then i said all right um i don't know the actual uh, revenues financials of their current bakery business but i just went ahead and did an assumption and said okay let's say they're doing way below the average and they're only making 250 grand with a profit margin of 20 percent. so that's 
fifty thousand a year that they'll net and profit for every two fifty they make. My goal, if I had a business like this, and I'm actually just basing it off of what I've done in my business from year to year, um, I've been able to increase income by thirty five percent year over year, and then in some cases double. Right. So I just kind of took that number and said, okay, let's set out the intention of if I throw. 2376 into the bakery business to provide marketing sales additional revenue try to help cut costs right increase profit margin kind of spread this money around to try and increase profits by 35 percent you do 250 grand times 35 percent you're gonna get 87,500. all right so total from one year being 250 fast forward a year total revenue the end of that year would be 337,500. Okay, cool. Take the 337,500 times 20%, you get 67,500. So from 67,5 to 50 is a $17,500 increase. That's a 73% return on the capital that they would have put into the bakery business. Let's just say we set the intention out to do that. Even if we failed miserably and got 50% of the way there, you would have offset the borrowing costs tremendously and whatever was netted that you decide to take out of the business, the profit, right? And you move that money back into the policies. It's going to help them the following year. One year later, they have, say, on the low end, half a 17.5, right? Plus their income, their cash flow, plus savings, plus debt tool year two when they go to dump 45 grand in they have the option to simply max fund the policy 45 grand plus whatever they pull from here in profit they could use to cover the loan interest or pay down what they borrowed right a portion of the 23 say say 10,000 say nine seven whatever the number is they can max fund it with their existing income that's not an issue max funding it because we already ran the numbers so can max fund it and say they got 17.5 well, 17.5 could be used to pay down the 2370, 23,760 from what they borrowed. Do you see that? Right. And then obviously the borrowing costs is offset. Okay, cool. Year two, if I dumped 45 grand in and then paid 17.5 on the loan plus interest, I would have, you would, you would agree. I'd have even more capital to what borrow out again for the following year to the bakery business rinse lather repeat right let's say things go terrible throw 20 23,760 in and they don't decrease in revenue and they don't increase in revenue they stay the same 50 grand profit so that means that 2370 that 23,000 did nothing technically there's still profit of the 50k maybe they could pull a little bit from the profit just to pay the loan interest they'll still have the 45k from one year to the next from their own income whether it's velocity banking savings capital they got all these other accounts that they could say sell from if they wanted to they don't have to right so they could max fund the policy again 45 and they could take out another 23,760 if they wanted to or maybe less maybe 20 grand maybe 15 and then do it again the second year in the bakery business and let's say by the second year boom they increase their revenue to that number and then let's just say the numbers work out where they do that 17.5 that could go back into the policy and get reborrowed out and do it again and then it creates this flow this could be a three to five year strategy to grow a bakery business to do above the average right and then they get a portion of the profits year over year to cycle the money in and out of the policies and as the policy grows understand that internally the internal rate of return on the policy itself starts to generate a positive internal rate of return anywhere from two to four percent probably a little bit higher as we approach years five six and seven and onward right so that could be a phenomenal strategy this is outside the box this isn't you know borrow from here and go buy crypto go buy stocks this is like gdp real gdp real business all right brick and mortar type stuff uh, so there's a lot of opportunity there uh, that concludes our video our part two in part three we're going to keep unpacking this and we'll go a little further
a little further, a little further, a little further, okay? If you're enjoying this and you wanna join me on this journey, you need a financial coach, you need a financial consultant, you need a business consultant, business coach, okay? I can be those things for you at the time that you need it, okay? So you may not be in this position yet. You may not be making the income that you make yet. Well, I can just be a financial consultant, a financial coach for you at that time. I wanna meet you where you're at, right? Solve your initial financial problems first and then start to expose you to other financial concepts and strategies that can accelerate your income, cash flow, ultimately leading you to financial freedom, financial independence, becoming a cheerful giver, living an abundant lifestyle. You can live in abundance, give in abundance, be who you are in abundance, right? Ultimately building the kingdom here on earth, right? Phenomenal stuff. Got a lot of links in the description below in terms of how you and I can work together. Got a lot of different resources and referrals I can you know, point you to, uh, to solve those problems that you have in your finances, getting you to a better level. My name is Denzel Rodriguez. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.